Welcome to SAG TV News. I am Alicia George. In our top stories, official launch of Emancipation Celebrations 2014. UN Chief launches sanitation program in Haiti. Child abuse image investigation leads to 660 arrests. And in sports, DFA selects 20 to participate in CFU Under-17 Boys Tournament. Details of these will follow. Welcome back. A number of activities have been organized to mark the 180th anniversary since the abolition of slavery in Dominica. This year's Emancipation Celebration also marks the 200th anniversary since the death of Jaco, Dominica's paramount maroon chief. The celebration began today July 16th with an official launch at the Old Mill Cultural Center in Caneville, where Acting Chief Cultural Officer Jacinta David highlighted some of those activities. The Golden Drum Awards Ceremony is an annual event presented by the National Cultural Council and the Cultural Division. The main highlight is the presentation of the Golden Drum Award to individuals, groups or institutions that have made a great contribution to the art and culture spanning more than 20 years. The Golden Drum is Dominica's top cultural award with the issuance of three to five awards annually. The award ceremony will be held at the Arawak House of Culture on July 30th. Other activities include an emancipation lecture on July 31st, hosted by the National Reparations Committee at the Barracoon Building in Roseau. Emancipation Day on August 1st, followed by an emancipation hike and a community event titled Honoring Our Heroes on August 2nd. The celebrations will conclude with a Nature Island Literary Festival and Book Fair on August 8th through 10th. Also speaking at the launch, Dr. Alwyn Bully, chairman of the Nature Island Literary Committee, says this year, patrons will witness a much-needed change in the festival. And this year we'll be actually presenting a series of plays and discussions on playwriting and, and directing, etc. in memory of and in honor of William Shakespeare, who celebrates his 450th anniversary this year. 450 years since the birth of William Shakespeare. <laughs> the man who brought modern writing into focus. Meanwhile, Minister for Culture, Honorable Justina Charles, says it is important for all of us to recall our history and pass it on to the young generation. We must always remember that the resistance of the Maroon and the slaves here in Dominica and other Caribbean countries played an important part in hastening the end to slavery. Emancipation celebration thus allows us to pay tribute to those who died for our freedom and to celebrate that freedom. A people with no knowledge of their past is like a tree without roots. The Emancipation Festivity is an annual event commemorating the abolition of slavery in Dominica. It is a celebration of freedom, the struggle of our ancestors and the Maroons and others who played an active role in the abolition of slavery. Earlier this month, it was announced that the 2014-2015 national budget would be delivered on Wednesday, July 23rd from 10 a.m. during the House of Parliament proceedings. Adding to this announcement, Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Scarrett said in a recent statement that government has not interrupted any of its social safety nets in relation to the upcoming budget. We continue to implement a number of very important projects. Now, Within the region, you, you, you hear of governments cutting in salaries. In St. Lucia, there's a fiscal gap. The government has indicated that it has to close the fiscal gap. The route they, they've taken to close the fiscal gap is reducing on the wage bill. The wage bill is always um, the largest uh, chunk of, 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 the, of the recurrent expenditure of, of, of all governments. The Prime Minister noted that there is always a case that can be made for the increase in tax. However, over the past few years, his government has been able to minimize the impact on its taxpaying public in respect to a number of capital projects. If the taxpayers are saying to you that they're not in a position to pay more, um, can you really um, tax them more? And this is, why the, this is the point I've also made in respect to salary increases. Um, there's nothing wrong in unions making a request for salary increases. But the question is, are we the Dominican people prepared to pay more? to underwrite the increase in, in, um, in salaries at this time. The Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association, DHTA, recently issued a call for the reduction of value-added tax, VAT, the removal of tax on service charges, 
food for staff and owners, uniform for staff, and an overall reduction in the rate of tax on accommodations. One of the things I've always stated is that the VAT replaced a number of taxes in the country. And uh, while we, we want to be responsive to the requests of various stakeholders, the government must take everything, every request, um, and consider the whole before we take a decision. You cannot take a decision without looking at the whole impact on the entire country. He did say, however, that there are some requests made by the DHD which the government can consider in the upcoming budget. Travel and Leisure, an online travel magazine based in New York City, has named Dominica's Boiling Lake one of the strangest lakes in the world. There are more than 3 million or so lakes worldwide, so it takes quite an astounding trick to stand out, according to an article published in CNN Travel on July 10, 2014. Dominica placed fifth out of 17 entries which were considered to be attention-grabbing. The official article on travel and leisure read, Water at the center of this 200-foot wide lakelet stays in a constant rolling boil, so hot that no one has been able to take an accurate measurement. But consider that at the shore, this lake already measures between 180 and 197 degrees. Scientists believe the vapor-covered cauldron is really a flooded fumarole or a vent that leads directly down to volcanic magma. It's not the largest heated lake in the world, but the boiling lake is certainly the most forbidding. Other top-rated lakes include the Sported Lake in Canada, Tanzania's Lake Natron, Jellyfish Lake in Palau, Lake Nonharin in Thailand, and La Brea Peach Lake in Trinidad and Tobago. The online magazine also named Dominica as one of the best places to travel for 2014. The magazine is published 12 times a year and has a readership of 4.8 million. 53 children between the ages of 5 and 13 are currently benefiting from the Public Library's annual summer program, which began on July 7th and will run until the 25th. Sylvia Christian, coordinator of the library's summer program, said the children are learning more about the environment, how to write songs, dance, paint, read, and write. This year, our theme is Explore Your World. Okay? And it's our sub theme, but our overall theme is Read, Connect, Explore Your World at your library. This year, we have organized various activities for the children. We have, um, like right now, we have. Um, all the children can write, write in um, songs. So we have invited Mr. Ian Jackson to teach them how to write songs, and that's what he's doing right now. We also have Creole, they're going to teach them basic Creole words, so they can be able to speak the Creole language. Also, we um, have um, teaching them about organic farming. We have had a field trip to this smart farm where the proprietor took them on a tour of the field and we actually taught them the different leaves, the different trees, the different herbs. Christian noted so far the children have been on a number of field trips where they are learning firsthand how local products are manufactured. She noted with the number of activities included in the summer program, the children will be fully entertained. Okay, so far, this program has been very successful. At, at the end of the week, I asked, I just have an evaluation at the end of each week, and asked the children if they have been enjoying the program. They said, yes, they have been enjoying it. But so far, so good. Everything is working out well. The children are enjoying themselves. Christian also pointed out that the summer program will enable the children to decide their careers for the future and work towards it. The children also participate in reading competitions daily in an effort to strengthen their vocabulary. Reading is very, very, very important. At an early age, a child should begin reading from the stomach, from the mother's, from the womb. The mother can read to that child. When that child is born, then the mother can read. So reading is very important. The more you read to the child, is the more the child gains knowledge. So reading is very, very important. The children's reading ability will be tested at the end of the program. We now go to the People's Poll brought to you by Beacon. When we return, more stories. Welcome back. Wayne Bertrand of Portersville is pleading with the public for their assistance in locating his vehicle. Between the hours of 12 a.m. on Tuesday, July 15th and 8 a.m. this morning, a white Nissan Sunny B14 car was stolen in Portersville across from Jericho's Bakery on Steber Street. According to Bertrand, a stack of CDs, his business documents, and over $600 were stolen from the vehicle. 
Anyone who sports a white car with registration number PK981 is asked to call telephone number 225-5801 or visit Ross University where they can request to speak to Bertrand. Distinguishing features on the car include a crack on the front windshield, a crack on the left side of the back bumper, one blue wiper on the driver's side of the vehicle, and a black on the passenger side, as well as four white rims, three of which are racing rims and one regular. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Scarrett says that family members of persons at the Dominica Infirmary need to do more than they are currently doing, as it relates to financial contributions to the organization. He said although the government covers the full cost of the infirmary, he recently had to make a donation of $70,000 to the organization in order to carry out improvement works at the facility. But you have people who have family members, and these family members, they have lots of land, they have money in the bank, they receive a, a pension, they receive social security benefits, and these families are not giving the infirmary not one dollar of the pension or the money they're getting from Social Security. The Prime Minister says the policy will be changed by the government where persons wishing to live at the infirmary will have to sign a legal document authorizing that their pensions or Social Security funds are sent to the organization. And if you have land, you should sell land or bequeath the land to the infirmary so the infirmary can liquidate it so to help pay for your maintenance. Because when you come to the infirmary, the infirmary and the government provides 100 percent care. Doctor's visit must be covered by the infirmary. Nurses' visit must be covered by the infirmary. Medication covered by the infirmary. And even when the person dies, the infirmary has to pay to bury that person. It cannot be fair to the state. It cannot be fair to the managers of the infirmary, that somebody who has money as small or as big as it is would leave that money in the bank or people, family members would benefit from it and the person who, who worked for that money cannot benefit and enjoy that money. He said he has brought it up with the management of the infirmary, advising them to send a recommendation to the board of directors, the office of the prime minister and the minister of social services so it can be discussed. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights. <music>